Hello, everybody. It says City Menhaven here today. And I have something to say that's probably going to be surprising every single one of you. This is a review without any gameplay. The reason why is because I will not buy this tank. The TS-54, the double tap per se, is the biggest waste of gold you will ever spend. Hands down. Biggest waste. I am getting sick of seeing them pull out tanks and um, up tier them. It, it's up tiered. It's up tiered. It has slightly better penetration for its uh, APCR round. Um, it's it's a complete joke. For starters, let's take a look at the penetration. 218 millimeters. And then let's go take a look at console. 240 millimeters. So a 22 millimeter increase on the standard round, and it's up tiered. This is the only advantage that it has on its up tier. Along with that, 284 premium pin on the premium APCR round. Over here in PC, uh, it's 252 millimeters pin. So that's a 32 penetration increase. Now, this is not the fun part of this tank. The part that irritates me the absolute most is this. If they would have made this um, a tier tier 9, and they would have done a little bit to the armor, and they changed a couple of things, they made it slightly better. Okay, slightly ever so better. Then I, I'd be sitting here saying something completely different, and I would actually buy the tank. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my money to buy this tank. What I'm gonna show you is everything wrong with this tank. I've gone against it so far a total of six times tonight. And six times in head-to-head -head fight, me grinding my M103, um, going after my three mark. I've killed it. Every time, head to head. It did not stand a chance. And why did it not stand a chance? Well, let me show you why it didn't stand a chance. Let's come here. All right, some people may think, oh, well, that's a really, really, really thick gun mantle. Okay, now let's talk about spaced armor and how spaced armor works. Spaced armor, for whatever reason, doesn't auto ricochet. These 200 millimeter bricks on the side of the tank are weak spots, period. You have 200 pin, it doesn't matter the angle that these are at, you're going to go through them. So coming back over to PC, let's go ahead and just slightly zoom in. 218 standard pin right here. 100% chance. 100% chance, 100% chance. And right here, this is a really good angle, all right? And I mean, you're going to bounce, okay? You're going to hit these and you're going to bounce. But then as you come around the side, from the front, okay, these are beyond weak. As you come around, it's spaced armor. So if you have the penetration value to go through this, all right, we load the premium. Suddenly, this weak spot no longer exists. It's just out the window, okay? completely out the window. You may see this 300 millimeter spot, but it's like the entire side of the turret's exposed now. If you're shooting this from the side, there's no point. You have the entire side armor. From the front, easy penetration. Okay. From PC to console, the armor model is exactly the same, except for point ones. For instance, um, you have 101.6 on the upper plate, while on console, it's 101 without the point six. So they removed that 0.6, which actually made this, makes this slightly better against heat rounds. Whenever it's maxed out gun depression and everything else, it actually makes a very specific penetration value, not penetrate it, but it's very, very rare scenarios that that actually happens. So let's take this armor. Now, from a top view, this is what you're looking at for the tier 9 with 252 penetration. This is 252 pin. Let's compare this now to a single tier 9 that you're going to be going against in general. Common gun, AE phase 1. This is 258 standard pin, 340 heat pin. This is going to be the average that you're going to be seeing on the field the entire time. Okay, You're going to be able to go through the gun mantle. Standard rounds are going to be able to pin this weak spot. Your hatches are there. You're going to be able to constantly, even whenever it's maxed out gun depression of 8 degrees, easy pin, easy pin, underneath the gun mantle, through the gun mantle, uh, side cheeks, little hatch in the front. If it's peeking you, just shoot in between the barrels. I've already done this twice in my E75 tonight. And then the top armor, sure, 400 millimeters of effective armor. But then again, this is tier 8 versus this round. Now, here's where one of the biggest problems come in. You end up in a brawling scenario. This is actually a much shorter tank. All of your top armor 
is 30 millimeters of effective armor. Okay. Over on console, this is 30 millimeters of effective armor across the entire roof deck. Okay. You have 20 millimeters of under armor, which means it's going to be extremely easy to just get underneath whenever he's trying to poke a ridge line and he's over peaking or he's side scraping somewhere else. You're going to be able to overmatch this under armor here. It's a little bit harder to aim for just because it's a lot smaller compared to most tanks, but it is there. Um, yeah, coming back over to console, easier to look at the armor viewer from this point of view because I can just scroll down it and go from there as I knock stuff over because I'm legitimately angry at the fact that this is in the game. 38 millimeters of armor, this is actually 38.1 over on PC, but that's your rear. Okay, that means that any derp gun in tier 8 is going to pin the rear of your armor. Okay, your, your spaced armor, for instance, 6 millimeters of spaced armor, that's going to be slight high explosive protection, but take a look at the top armor there. That's all exposed. That's easy penetration. Underneath, you got 40 millimeters. That's easily overmatched by 122 millimeters without a problem. You got 50 millimeters on the sides coming inward. So now I know whenever I'm playing a 152 caliber gun, I just kind of aim a little bit lower and I can overmatch the side armor of this tank without a problem because this thing is going to be going against tier 9 and tier 10 more consistently. And top tier for this is mid-ranked matchmaking for the tier 8 variant. You're never top tier inside this tank. You're always going to be middle ground no matter what. The side armor is 63 millimeters, and there it is. This is easily penetrated by a very large amount of high explosives in the game that have been recently added, and they're just going to tear through it. The front of it starts to get a little bit better, uh, 85, 80 millimeters, but it's still nothing to be impressed with. Uh, for me, it's a joke. I, I, um, I asked Visha what his opinion was on it and I watched some of his gameplay and it was funny to me from just listening to some of his comments and I completely agree. He, he can't play it like a heavy and he can't play it like a medium. He wants to play it like a medium, but he can't play it like a medium. And the reason why he can't play it like a medium is because the terrain resistance on this tank is so god-awful that it's 3.5, 3.2 in soft terrain, 1.5 in medium terrain, 1.2 in hard terrain. So this thing's never going to be capable of reaching its max traverse speed, let alone maintaining top speed inside a soft or even medium terrain a very good amount of time. And the number one thing that's making me laugh my butt off the most is you see that power to weight ratio over there on the left side? That's 12.36. But if we're taking a look at it over on PC, once again, they, for whatever reason, love to mislabel everything inside this game to never have it actually be correct. Power to weight ratio over on the actual official website for Wargaming is 13 once again. That... If you round off 12.36, it's going to equal 12. Why is it 13 on the website? Uh, there's a couple other statistics inside this as well on the website that is completely wrong. So, yeah. I mean, once again, this is another upscaled tank. And if you guys are asking what the other ones are, the Arachi. The Arachi, 42 millimeters of side armor on a heavy tank. It was originally the tier 7 Japanese heavy and it was supposed to be released as the Japanese tier 7 premium heavy the Arachi But at the last second they bumped it up and they're like, well, we want to make more money off of this So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna pull a war gaming and We're just gonna buff the front armor and then we're gonna take this tank and then we're just gonna buff it again We're gonna give it a better 100 millimeter. We're gonna give it the best 100 millimeter in the game rate of fire and damage Sorry for yelling a little bit because I am a bit upset about this. I Mean you guys should be this is what they're doing To our game. I was excited about the TS 54. I would have bought it hands down. No questions asked at tier 8 and then again, it's also a double shot with a really ridiculous amount of DPM with 280 alpha. But even then, it's now a tier 9. It's not the tier 8 variant anymore. It's 280 alpha. You're going to hit somebody for 280 and they're going to look at you and giggle a little bit because they're going to smack you for 400, 390, 320 with 330 heat pen and not care. Because 
you're going against 9s and 10s in a tier 8 without the armor ever being changed. Not to mention with the way your side armor is, the way your under armor is, the way your roof is, the amount of artillery that's going to be hitting this in tier 9 and 10, you're a farm fest for them. That's all you'll ever be. Side scraping, going to be very difficult. You have to maintain auto ricochets the entire time. This is not a tank for the Yale Wild. This is a tank for the best, and they're going to make it look okay. So far, the best match I've seen today, after going through um, a total of, I think, uh, 22 hours of content, just looking at statistics and score screens, was 5,800 damage. So far, from what I've seen live over on Twitch, no one has broken 6,000 damage inside this tank. It's a tier 9. I break 7,000 inside my tier 8s. So, for me, that's pretty much it. And the last one, one of the most predatorial things I think I've seen in the game, is it has a gun stabilizer. Vertical stabilizer, gun stabilizer. Improved ventilation. Okay, I understand improved ventilation. And then, the one that makes no sense. A traction system. Why is this tank getting a traction system with 12.36 power to weight? So you can go 44 whenever you're going downhill. So you can go 38 on mild terrain and completely hate everything about the tank because you're barely able to maintain your top speeds. But then again, we are playing on the console variant, so there's actually a lot of hard terrain, which is 90% of the map, so pretty much we only have to pay attention to one type of terrain type. But the moment that you end up in any of the other terrain types, why is the traction system there? A power terrain is way better. Not to mention the 390 base view range. You don't need a gun stabilizer on this. And I'm pretty sure you can equip a... No, nah, I don't think you can equip a gun rammer. That's a big maybe. I don't know. I don't know on the tank. Doesn't matter to me. But rather than gun stabilizer, optics. View range is one of the most important things in this game. The second you sacrifice it is the second you lose a flank because you can't see crap. I mean, that's my personal opinion on it. You know, take it from a guy that's put 10 years into the game and has dedicated himself to learning the mechanics as much as possible. This is a predatorial practice that I'm seeing inside this game now, again. And TS-54, double tap? <laughs> Not sorry. This is a rant and a negative tank on a tank i am not buying it's that bad other than that you guys have a great day afternoon night whatever time it is for you i am gonna go to bed i've already been angry enough today and this is one of the main reasons why i guess i still smoke so until next time you guys i'm out